In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll be sharing some tips and tricks for working with a stitch pattern known both as seed stitch and moss stitch. These tips can improve results, but also reduce the potential for making errors that have to be fixed. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. To get this stitch pattern, you alternate a knit one with a purl one all the way across the row. And then on the next row, or in the round if you're working in the round, if the stitch looks like a knit, you purl it. If it looks like a purl, you knit it. So not only are you alternating knits and purls across the row, you're alternating knits and purls up the column. Now in the US, we call this seed stitch, but in the UK, they call this moss stitch. This stitch pattern also alternates uh, knit one, purl one across the row, but going up the columns, you alternate two knits with two purls. In the US, we call this moss stitch. In the UK, they might call it double moss stitch or Irish moss stitch. And it's that label moss stitch that can cause some confusion because in the UK, this is moss stitch, but in the US, this is moss stitch. What I'm talking about today is this stitch pattern, the stitch pattern that alternates a knit and a purl across the row and a knit and a purl up the columns. Seed stitch has a two stitch repeat. So after you knit one and then purl one, you repeat what you just did. So it's knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, all the way across. For most stitch patterns that would have a two stitch repeat like this, if you're going to work it in the round, you would cast on an even number. So when you work with an even number of stitches when you're working in seed stitch, the pattern looks fine until you transition from the end of the round to the beginning of the round and then you get some disruption in the pattern. What happens is that because the end of a round appears to be a row higher than the beginning of the round, if this is a knit stitch and you worked a purl at the end of the round, in order to maintain the stitch pattern continuity in the first stitch of the row, so you're alternating knits and purls, that means that the second round is going to begin the purl stitch. So if the first round ended with a purl and the second round begins with a purl, you get two purl stitches next to each other. And then at the end of this round, you end up with a knit stitch. But the beginning of the third round starts with a knit stitch. So you can avoid that problem with seed stitch. It's one of those stitch patterns where you can eliminate this, this discontinuity in the stitch pattern so here I have a swatch in the needles where instead of casting on an even number of stitches for seed stitch, I cast on an odd number. And what you see here is that the, you don't get that discontinuity across the end of the round like you do when you have an even number of stitches. And that's because right here, I've just ended this round with a purl and I'm ready to start the beginning of the next round, uh, and that one has to be a knit in order to preserve the continuity of this column of stitches, but it's also going to preserve the continuity between the end of the round and the beginning of the round. So in this case, because I maintain the continuity regardless of where I am in the round, I actually don't have to pay attention to where the beginning and end of the round is if I'm only working in seed stitch. Let's say I'm working on a cowl or something I'm casting on for, and I wanna work in seed stitch for say 10 inches or something like that. I don't have to pay attention to where the beginning of the round is. I can just, at any point when I, I find that I have you know, the number of inches that I want, I can just start casting off in pattern and it will be absolutely fine. When you work seed stitch flat and you're ending a row, in this case, I ended the row with a, a knit stitch. When I go to work the next row, however I ended this row, I'm going to start the next row with the same stitch. So I'm gonna end this with a knit and when I turn it over, this stitch presents as a purl and I always knit stitches that present as purls and purl stitches that begin as knits. So 
Working with an odd number of stitches can be an advantage when you're working flat as well. Because if you have an odd number of stitches and you start the row with a knit, that means you're going to end the row with a knit. And that means that when you turn the work uh, to work the, the following row, you will also start with a knit and end with a knit because you're going to be working stitches opposite as they present. So for me, I find that uh, working with an odd number of stitches in seed stitch is a benefit when working flat as well. For this swatch, I'm simulating a situation like a scarf or a blanket, something like that, where I want to start with a seed stitch border and I want to continue the border along the sides until I get toward the end and then finish with a border here. Now once again, I really prefer having an odd number of stitches to work across so that when I'm working the border, I can start and end with a knit on every row. And then that means that I, what I want on the sides as well are an odd number of stitches. So here I have five stitches and I can, I always start and end with a knit stitch at both ends it, at both um, borders. And then when I flip it over on the other side, I'll be starting and ending that border with a knit stitch as well. Now in order to do this, that means I have to have an odd number of stitches in the center. So here's a little diagram of what I just showed you. So if I have an odd, if I've cast on for an odd number of stitches, then I will start and end the, the bottom border with a knit stitch just like I want. And then in the row before this main pattern starts, um, this five, these five stitches that will become the border, I'm going to start with a knit and end with a knit. And then this section is going to start with a purl, end with a purl, and then this section here knit, start and end with a knit. Um, and that requires uh, an odd number of stitches across this span. But not every pattern that you might want to work is going to have an odd number of stitches in the center. Instead, uh, it might have an even number. And so if it has an even number in the center and you had the same number of stitches, even if they're odd on both sides, that means you would have to have an even number in order to cast on. Well, that ruins the whole start and end with a knit on every row. Instead, you would start with a knit here and end with a purl here. And then when you got to just the border sections, this one would be starting and ending with a knit. And this one would be starting and ending with a purl. And then when you turned it over to work in the other direction, again, you'd be starting and ending with a purl here and starting and ending with a knit here. Well, that ruins that whole, let's make it easy by having an odd number of stitches. And the, and the reason it ruins it is because of this even number of stitches that you need. What you can do is make a modification so that you start with an odd number of stitches. And that allows you to work your border by starting a knit and ending with a knit. It allows you to work these borders right here, starting and ending with a knit at both places. But what you do when you transition from your border to the main pattern in the middle, which has to have an even number of stitches, is that you increase or decrease. So if you were supposed to have 100 stitches across all of this right here, you could cast on for 101 stitches here. And then as you were transitioning to the main pattern, you would decrease a stitch. And then as you transition uh, to the seed stitch border at the top, you would increase back to that original cast on number so that you have the odd number of stitches that you need in order to work your seed stitch pattern. You can either start with an extra stitch, decrease it out here and then add it back in here, or you can start with one stitch fewer, add the extra stitch in here and then decrease it out either way. But this will allow you to work all of your seed stitch borders by starting with a knit and ending with a knit, regardless of whether you have an even number or an odd number in the middle. These tricks work specifically with seed stitch because it has a two stitch, two row repeat. There are other stitch patterns that can maintain continuity between the end of one round and the beginning of the other, but they tend to be diagonal in nature, shifting one stitch each row to the left or the right. A pattern that shifts less frequently is less likely to avoid a jog. 
you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.